All right, so I'm just going to sort of commentate as I watch this. Um, a lot of this footage I actually haven't seen uh, as far as the battle replay goes. This actually happened at 6.25 a.m., so um, this is way before I was up that morning. And let's see um, yeah, how this battle went. So the first wave by Tiga here is a dismantle squad. So there we go. There's the dismantle squad. It's coming in. First thing it did was take out this uh, link. So this link feeds my um, upgrading in this room, which isn't a issue because it does have a fallback strategy um, where it just spawns regular creeps that carry the energy over there. But let's see what he's doing here to this wall. It looks like both these are um, fully catalyzed dismantlers, and he's got a decent amount of heal behind these guys too be able to counter my towers but this wall is 7 million so let's see what my room's initial response was it was to try to spawn a militia and it was still spawning pioneers for some reason I think the pioneer is to upgrade this since it's in downgrade mode currently so it looks like our masons got there and a boosted militia was able to make it to the wall, forcing these guys to um, take a few steps back and try to reposition. And it looks like they're just going to play this bouncing game for a while. And here's one thing Tigo was actually talking about on the Slack forums where my groups were actually leaving uh, the safety of the wall. And by doing that, it opens up, up to attack from ranged attack. And each one of Tiga's squads has a little bit of ranged attack to deal with, uh, you know, enemy creeps. So he's able to take out a few of these guys. It looks like. So it looks like he's just gonna keep bouncing around between the different wall sections um, as my militia follows him. And this is a pretty cheap way to counter this attack. Like um, this catalyzed. Um, dismantle boost is able to do it's four times dismantle uh, let's confirm that though um, deposit here's the article about resources mineral compounds t3 300% dismantle effectiveness so a uh, total of 400% and 100 times 4 times how many parts did he have on a single creep? It looks like he has 36. That's pretty devastating because he has two of them. So 30,000 damage, uh, 20,000 over two ticks with uh, repair and then the uh, damage being done by the towers it looks like. So these are really devastating and rather than deal with the, um, the wall damage, uh, it's better to to spawn a creep uh, as far as cost effectiveness goes uh, with credit wise that is uh, this one creep is able to you know prevent them from dismantling consistently um, and it's giving these uh, masons a chance to actually go and pick up the energy that's dropped from the dismantle action and repair these walls so it looks like our walls are remaining pretty high in this first wave we have a, a replacement squad just came in Uh, pretty similar composition. He has a little less ranged attack, more dismantle. Um, let's see how long we have to wait before we get a second squad from Tiga. Yep, here we go. So here's his first um, change in squad composition. He's got two um, fully boosted. These are like his mixed creeps that have some range, so they're able to deal with these masons pretty well um, when I still had the issue before I fixed it where my masons would go to uh, closest to the repair target rather than the position that was closest to them which is making them traverse all the way through here where they could be uh, attacked and I, I was able to fix that um, a few hours into this battle but it looks like he's just going to keep grinding away at these walls and because he now has two squads my militia isn't able to you know, counter both of them. Looks like this is a respawn. 
Um, he should have, yeah, here's a second one. It's going to be coming online. And same issue here. We had the militia uh, stepping off the platform um, where he could be attacked. And this, this combination is pretty effective for him. He's able to get this wall down almost 3 million hit points, which is significant amount of damage, more than 50% of the way um, down. And here's where you start to see power creeps. So power creeps are interesting because he's actually able to prevent my spawning entirely uh, with this effect. As long as he has this creep in the room, he can prevent one spawn from spawning a creep. Um, with a pretty tremendous op cost. He's looking at an op cost. I think it's uh, this is an effect of five and it costs ten ops. So two ops per second to prevent this spawner from actually spawning its creep. And it, as long as he's able to prevent that militia from spawning, and it looks like that's his focus, um, I don't have a second militia unit that can deal with this guy. It looks like he ran out of ops down there, so he's going to leave the room to go refill. Because he's gone, this creep will continue to spawn. It looks like we have two militia units now, so we can sort of spread out our forces and um, keep him bouncing away from the walls. Uh, but same issue there, he's taking a lot of damage when he's stepping off the rampart and these guys are still in range um, with his pursue. So I might make some changes there um, coupled with the added squares I've, I've put in here. Um, so the current room actually looks like um, this. This is the main one having these little uh, walkways. So each one of these uh, frontline ramparts is now accessible through a protected uh, pathway. Uh, except for right here. I guess I'll add one more. And then put a flag down. So this, this tells my uh, wall repairs to not upgrade it to full health. Um, but they'll still switch targets in time to repair it before it's destroyed. But because of this, now they're able to path through this as priority and get to the front line without being uh, attacked, saving my tower some energy, which means more energy for wall upgrading. Anyway, back to the history. So it looks like that, guys. Oh, so there was a mistake. The militia left the walls, and because it left, it was able to get into range where it was taken out. So I may have to make some changes to prevent the creep from leaving these ramparts. It should never do that. It should always try to path inside the walls um, where it's protected from attack. You're seeing a lot of damage to this guy too. I think we had another loss just now. Yep. So this guy pathed outside, and it doesn't look like he was boosted. Let's try to understand why these guys are not boosted. Um, we're stocked on that. We're stock. We're not stocked on this. So there's a threshold that these have to hit before it will attempt to boost a mason unit. And the other ingredient is the move. So without that catalyzed um, carry, it's not going to spawn a boosted unit. Um, that's also going to go on my change list where um, I'll just change the body type a little bit if it doesn't have um, a specific boost. Now let's skip forward a little bit. Looks like we got the power creep coming back. We only have one squad to counter at this point, but the single unit without boost is not able to um, trigger these guys to step back a space, which means we're going to see some damage to this wall. And he's switching targets again. So I'm not sure exactly how ticket targeting works. Um, it looks like he bounces around between targets pretty frequently. Um, this does make it a little harder to repair because there's multiple areas um, to defend and to uh, fix. But uh, splitting his forces like that allows me to, well, especially when he's close to the, the core, where I'm able to spawn creeps quicker, um, less travel distance to repair, things like that. So all these died a natural death. Um, 
of old age, and we're still 9,000 ticks to safe mode. So let's skip ahead a little bit here. This is when I was first getting back online. Um, one of the first changes I made was to fix the pathing issue. So the mason shouldn't uh, go outside the wall anymore, uh, but they should try to hang back and repair from there. Other thing is I, I did bring some uh, defenders in from another room manually. Um, also on the to-do list is automatic spawning for these squads where the squad should be deployed to deal with um, power creeps. Because if power creeps are in the room, we're going to have an issue because these spawns are going to be uh, heavily handicapped. Uh, another thing, I probably retasked these infantry units as militia so that they would um, stay in the walls and sort of supplement the militia count in this room. So you can see these uh, retasked militia units are just sort of following around and we do have this issue here. I'm not sure what's causing it, but they're not pathing all the way to the wall. Um, and this is a recurring problem with both the militia and these retasked militia units where um, they're getting stuck in a few different places. So I'll have to look into uh, whether this is like a pathing bug or a targeting bug, um, try to fix that. Um, you know, same thing here, this is just stuck and um, it could be stuck on this unit or, but there is an empty path here, so and I'm not sure exactly what's causing it. Same thing here, it's like no um, clear blockage. Um, my cost matrix should be blocking things like uh, structures that are unwalkable, but ramparts are not included and it is putting an additional um, cost matrix cost um, to squares that are able to take damage from uh, enemy units. But neither of those should be affecting these guys too much. These guys will path through damage uh, if it won't kill them. We're we were able to repair uh, some of the walls, but right here we have walls down as low as you know, 1.5 million. 1.3 at one point, and that's dangerously close. That is less than you know, 300 ticks to live on this squad. So um, targeted damage, it's fairly likely that that uh, would be able to break through. So uh, able to kill off that squad, it looks like, and it's just this one squad remaining. And um, that alone is not enough to deal with um, the healing from my war repairers. Um, so. The issue later on in the battle became uh, resources. You know, we've been able to hold off these wall these attacks because of these fully boosted defenders with a good supply of energy. And right now we're about 200k. Um, uh, right here in the battle, I made some code changes where it would prioritize uh, depositing at the storage rather than the terminal when it was coming back from upgrading and I also made some checks where if the terminal has a an effect being disrupt terminal um, it's not going to attempt to withdraw there causing issues where the creep would uh, wait um, and be returning a negative 7 error which is like target invalid so that was preventing these creeps from actually withdrawing resources and you know doing their tasks um, and that was also causing issues where the creeps would get stuck on a current task in their memory and then not refill the towers. I believe I fixed that at this point, but we'll see in a few hours when the attack re uh, resumes. So it looks like he's still going at this wall. Um, it's just a back and forth where these guys are able to get it repaired, but um, a long assault with power creeps here is able to uh, keep enough suppression on the spawning for um, him to make some headway. Looks like we still have this issue with uh, pathing outside the walls. So we're now a few thousand ticks in this battle. Safe mode is about to be available. And um, I had written a module to, um, at the time I made it move in all rooms, um, the tier 3 boost into the storage where they'd be available for defense um, even if uh, the terminal is being disrupted and I've also created a protocol now where it will try to stockpile energy in these frontline rooms and we'll see what that does but looks like this is a final wave and 
he was dangerously close to breaking through. Um, let's skip this back a little bit to around 2,000 ticks to go. So one thing I did try was um, sending squads in from other rooms, but that infantry unit is targeted at um, objectives, which are you know walls that they're assaulting or exposed structures outside the walls, things like that. And they weren't really uh, designed to fight uh, creeps. So I had to make some changes uh, on the fly. I think I fixed some targeting issues, but we'll see how they hold up this next wave. But one thing I did do was bring in several squads to try to attack these uh, power creeps. They do have a, quite a bit of hit points, but they're not invincible. But one of the issues right here in this assault is he's fixed his issue with supply. And that supply is pretty important because without it, he's not able to uh, keep up the disrupt terminal and the disrupt spawn continuously, just because how expensive it is. But uh, he switched some parameters, it seems like, and up the amount of ops that are being sent in this room. But in a second, you're going to see my counter squads actually breach and um, start attempting to take out those creeps. So there we go, they've arrived. And one thing is, his creep will actually retreat if it doesn't have the defender that is um, able to heal it. Um, but this right here was a missed opportunity where his creep was pathing away and if my creeps had just stayed in this area instead of going for the next target they would have been able to prevent this from leaving the room long enough where my towers could have taken it out or they could have done three hits of damage and actually killed off a power creep and power creeps have a respawn time of eight hours so taking that out of the fight would have been enough to prevent him from you know, pushing that attack further. I may have been able to get away with not safe moding this room uh, for quite a while longer. And um, I do have a lot of issues. It seems like with the targeting here, they path into fire and um, Tigga has a really cool feature where the creeps will actually rotate. So let's, let's back up here, but that orientation, that one takes quite a bit of damage. So the whole squad will path away, um, and he was able to heal it there. So either my towers weren't doing damage, or um, they didn't detect that he was in danger. But he was able to kill off both the units. Um, so... Not much I could have done there. And um, he gets very close to breaking through at a few points. Um, like this wall is down at less than a million at this point. And um, if it wasn't for this, I believe he's boosted, he, he would have been able to press that attack and maybe break broken through before I was able to safe mode. Uh, 1,700 ticks left at this point. So some key takeaways from this battle. If you have power enabled in a room, you need to implement some code to be able to deal with Disrupt Terminal. So Disrupt Terminal doesn't prevent you from shipping in resources, but it does prevent you from withdrawing. Um, so you need to have some checks on your creeps to make sure that it is possible to withdraw and maybe take some action like stockpiling in your storage rather than your uh, terminal. Other things are um, some basic defense on the walls is able to push these attackers back um, and pushing even ranged attackers back one space makes their effectiveness drop by about 60% since instead of doing 10 damage per uh, rampart in range 1, it's doing only 4 because it's range 2. And that makes range mass attack um, no longer viable. Um, I mean, the only way you're going to lose this fight because of the power of wall boosting is if you either run out of energy or fail to deal with um, these attackers and allow them to keep um, doing full damage. Like <clears throat> This is a 36 part creep, so he's doing 30 damage times 4 times 36. So 
about 8,000 damage between the two of them, uh, plus the range mass attack, uh, range attack, so he's going to be doing 20 there uh, times 4, so 80 damage per wall section, um, and then you know it drops off with range. But the one thing about these is melee attack doesn't drop resources, so there's not a resource pile you can use with your repairers to just pick up and keep re repairing. And so these are really effective at just burning energy for both the defender and the attacker, where the defender is going to have to spend constant resources upgrading this wall and repairing the damage done. Let's see where we're at as far as safe mode cooldown works. So we're at 1400. Uh, we still have militia defending. Um, this wall is at 1.85, 1 1.8. These are still pretty high, it looks like, so that's not an issue. Let's skip ahead a few hundred ticks. So at this point, um, I do have some counter squads again coming in the room and I don't think a single, yeah, it doesn't look like a single squad was able to deal with the um, medic unit that he has. And because of that, I wasn't able to prevent this. Um, oh, actually I was. I was able to kill it. And maybe that was a combination of tower or a misstep on his part. But uh, I was able to kill that defending medic and force that creep to respawn. Oh, not respawn, but retreat into the neighboring room. And... If it wasn't for that, I may have lost this battle right here. Um, I mean, walls are very low, and we still have, I believe it's about a thousand ticks tell cooldown. The same issue there, getting a little too zealous. Um, so I don't know if this is an issue with my medic unit not repairing the infantry, or if the amount of tough is insufficient. Maybe there's something else I can do, like have the towers fire and pre-heal um, to sort of supplement the healing of the medic, things like that, and try to get them in range for long enough, because that unit's able to do about 3,600 damage, uh, even with the tough, and that is, well, that's basically, that's just too much for this creep to deal with. A 3,600 damage is going to eat up most of his heal, so he's going to have 40 heal parts, so 40 times 30 times 4, no, 30, 40 times 48 heal per part, 1920 times 2 units like that, so 3800, so that, the attack from this is able to basically destroy enough parts to make up for um, the healing on both these units so then if you get supplemental damage from towers you're able to actually destroy these units so that's why they're always backing off so once again we got two squads um, 2.4 million here 2.3 2.5 and six and a half there so we're fine 2.69 so as long as these militia units are in the area, they're able to deal with most of the issues regarding, uh, well basically a militia unit can deal with a single squad and force it to back off um, in its current configuration. So uh, Tiga's counters to this would be things like adding a little bit of tough at the front. And if he does that, he's going to reduce the number of parts that are actually doing damage. So it's that trade-off. Um, the other thing is that tough parts are the most expensive units right now as far as the market goes. Um, the price of X has reached about 2 per unit. And the cost of XGH02 has risen to 8 on the buy side and about 12 on the sell side. So adding lots of tough to his uh, units is going to you know, do less offensive damage and uh, be very expensive economically. So 600 ticks still go. 400, it looks like a squad died, uh, but natural cause. Um, creep is back in the room. 
disrupting my terminal and spawns. We're at 400 to go. This wall's getting really low. And that same bug here is preventing these guys from actually reaching over here. So I might either have to restructure this wall, uh, just make it a straight run, or it's actually not a bad idea bringing this wall a couple spaces. Um, that means just less uh, exposed wall. And this is a little bit better defensible position. Uh, bringing it in two spaces might be enough to make these towers do a little more damage. Um, less distance traveled for my wall repairers. But he's very close to breaking through. We're looking at 700,000 on this wall. 600,000. 500. 400, 300, and maybe he broke through this wall. Yeah, 100, 100 ticks to go, and 108, 80. Yeah, he's definitely going to break through with 83 ticks to live. So if Tigger's um, creeps could actually path through a, a one block opening, uh, this room was lost. Uh, but his units are going to try to path through only two wide spaces. So this rampart would actually prevent his whole squad from moving through, as well as this one, this wall. But I, mean, I didn't want to micro this too much more, so I, I popped a safe mode to be able to actually code a bit. I was working on my laptop, uh, making a few of those code changes throughout the day, and um, it, it was just a pain working on that versus my desktop setup. So I was able to get the desktop set up um, about an hour or two before uh, safe mode was available, and write a few um, of my code changes that I've been thinking about uh, to actually implement. So you know, we'll see what this. Uh, becomes over the next few days. Um, it looks like I've lost the colonization effort over here. Um, you got a level four room now. It was level six, but he's uh, been actively reducing the um, uh, progress with a um, upgrade, like a, a claiming unit. Uh, by attacking the controller, he's able to uh, prevent upgrading for a thousand ticks and do quite a bit of um, downgrade uh, time damage. Another uh, thing about this is when the controller drops a level, it resets the cooldown on safe mode. So because I let it fall from 6 to 5 while that battle was going on, um, we have a 50,000 tick cooldown on the safe mode. So uh, that's not a strategy I can use anymore in this room, um, and that's going to be a, a hard-fought room, um, especially when Tiga has you know, much better squads that can deal with the sort of squad v. squad combat in unowned rooms. So it's going to be difficult to maintain control of this guy. Um, other things are he's been harassing all of the um, remote mines of this room during the cooldown period and preventing me from harvesting energy and filling up that terminal and storage. Um, not that it's a very effective, well, very difficult to, to destroy these guys, but just the fact that he's um, interfering here. And the module I wrote is um, not fully perfected. It basically just shuts off um, units in non-owned rooms that are under attack. So when the core room, the colony center, is um, under attack by power creeps or you know sustained squads, it prevents um, harvesting in other rooms to make sure we're not losing resources because if you're spending a ton of resources like sending out creeps to go harvest 
and they're just being killed off, then nothing's being uh, brought back and your return on investment is going to be uh, negative. So um, that's just one thing I've done to try to deal with it. But it's not a, a permanent solution. Um, you need to be able to harvest still or this room's going to get choked off eventually. So you're going to have to do something to deal with that. Anyway, those are um, sort of the main highlights of the battle and um, some of the things I did to deal with these squads, but it looks like there's still a lot of work to do. Um, oh, to finish off this video, I just want to go through some of the Slack comments, but um, here's the first ping I got about the attack. Um, so I checked my code after this, but... Um, he was eventually right. Um, I wasn't able to maintain control of that room without uh, popping a safe mode, uh, just because I needed some time to implement some changes to be able to deal with um, the sustained squad combat uh, assaults and to deal with the power creeps. Um, so not actually fully finished with that, so that will be on the to-do list um, before the next wave starts up. Uh, let's look at some of the other comments here. Um, I mean, my big downfall is enabling power. Um, and he, Ducky's pointing out that I, I did activate power creeps, uh, which does open up a big vulnerability. So before a new player decides to enable power in a room, make sure it's something you could defend. Uh, either only en enable in core rooms within your empire rather than having frontline rooms be um, vulnerable, and make sure you have enough power levels to actually make it effective. You're not, you don't want to enable power in a room that is only going to give you a marginal benefit when. Um, you're opening yourself up to a, a wide range of additional attack strategies. So it looks like that was me logging in for the first time. <laughs> Strike builder. Yeah, so talking about um, non-essential spawning is one thing I did. Um, fixing the issues with uh, Mason's ex um, venturing past the walls. Um, and instead of finding the closest uh, space to them, they were finding the closest space to the target that they were repairing, uh, causing a lot of unnecessary damage. Um, nukes. So here I thought the battle was going to be over. I uh, didn't see any uh, additional squads coming in, but. No, it was just a change of strategy while well, uh, Tigga's bot was uh, reconfiguring uh, squad layouts. Yeah, fall of a squad inbound. Didn't take too long to find that one. Um, I didn't check this one, but if you can operate power on operate extensions using terminal as a source, that would give you a way to basically move uh, you know 10,000 energy every 50 ticks from your terminal into your extensions. I don't know if it's possible to actually withdraw from extensions, but if you could, uh, that would be a way to cheat around uh, the operate uh, power disrupt terminal. Another thing you could do, a little costly, but you could um, actually destroy your own terminal and the ruin would store the resources. So it would cost you 100,000 energy but if you really needed energy, you could um, you know, destroy it, pick up the 300,000 energy, move it to your storage, and then rebuild the terminal. Um, so you know, probably a last, um, last ditch effort, but it's something you could do. Uh, a little bit of discussion in here about the, um, the different powers. This was sort of interesting, but the... Um, the power creeps in the room have to go back to um, heal and regenerate their uh, time to live. So they only have 5,000, which is three times longer than a normal creep, but if the travel time is 600 ticks, they're going to need 600 ticks to come back. And Tiga has this, um, because he needs to have that medic escort at all times, or his creep will withdraw, it, it was allowing for some breaks, um, which were just long enough for me to actually... Uh, you know, move some more store uh, materials from terminal to storage and get ready for the next assault. Yeah, so not having boost restocking um, prevented my repairs from actually being boosted for a lot of the fight. 
um, kiting party. This was interesting, all these little uh, skirmishes between my um, defense squads coming from other rooms. I did make some improvements here where the medic is going to tag the unit a little bit better, um, but we still have issues here where you know, they're not in range one, and this guy's going... Um, well, these two are going to go into a spot where they eventually die. Yep, so they weren't necessarily built for countering squads, um, but the logic I've built so far is sort of um, um, what do you call it, jerry rigged or whatever. So here I'll do some checks to see what actions. Could you attack and move in the same tick? It looks like you can. Um, yep, so here's that comment by def code store finish boost and storage that was great uh, suggestion and one thing I've implemented for frontline rooms and rooms that are being attacked and yeah countering the power creeps uh, with external squads may be the only um, viable solution here because uh, the disrupt spawn feature defense has to be automated agreed um, couple changes I need to make to make this um, work a little bit better maybe to make uh, militia pathing mason pathing uh, spawn order um, and a few other things to really make these squads stand up and then having effective uh, counter squads be spawned uh, relative to um, the heal capacity of the attackers <laughs> Yeah, me getting back on probably saved that room. Here's Tigga's great uh, uh, complaint that uh, repairs a little too overpowered. Um, uh, discussion about pathing. Yep, definitely had that uh, pathing bug. And I did uh, implement some changes here where, you know, tiles in damage range are going to have a higher value associated in their cost matrix, making them take the long way around if it could be safer. So here's a comment by Tigga about my repair guys not walking out to be suicided anymore. Uh, interesting question. So why don't I build 60 extensions? This was a decision on shard 3 where um, CPU is the issue not necessarily spawn time or um, spawn capacity as far as energy capacity goes I mean 40 extensions was my my new standard so 40 times 200 plus 900 in spawns so 8900 energy is usually enough to spawn um, any creep that I have in my sort of uh, creep bodies so the 40 extension was sufficient. I think I'm going to make some changes on shard 2 um, while I recode my spawn system. So instead of it being like a, a check to make uh, see if it's time to spawn, I'm going to do a check and then add them to a queue. And that way they can spawn uh, much quicker. And um, that should be more effective. But it would require having more energy available at times. So I might go to a 50 to 60 extensions in um, frontline and um, highway rooms. Yeah, um, so Tiga does have a mechanic now to uh, down downgrade controller, but it only works within 600, um, 600 tick range of the um, claim units. So because of that, I think my room is safe. Um, definitely have to refactor uh, the solutions I made on the fly. <laughs> Take a beat a little salty. Yep. So if he had three power creeps attack in that room, he'd able he'd be able to completely eliminate spawning which would probably be enough to break through the wall in you know a single creep lifetime so big vulnerability still um, but this can be countered with external squads and it's pretty expensive as well he's using you know 
basically 10 to 20 ops per tick um, to keep up the disrupt spawns and disrupt tower and disrupt terminal. And because of that, he's just burning thousands of credits every hour that he's uh, doing this assault. Um, yeah, he was just talking about like moving boosts. Um, definitely some problems with my counter squads. And yeah, there are a bunch of ways that Tiga could have made some manual tweaks, and he probably would have been able to take that room before I was sa able to safe mode. Um, but yeah, he he does uh, comment here that you know if you've eliminated a lot of these bugs, your room's more or less impenetrable on the defensive side. The only way to, to win a battle long term is economic warfare. But yeah, definitely my ten my defense has never been tested as well as um, this continued Tiga assault. And yeah, so what's Tigga's motivation? <laughs> Kicks and giggles or uh, economic needs? <laughs> giggles. Uh, my analysis is that Tigga is defending his territory um, as I'm trying to move uh, into it. Um, definitely, here's my... If, if he was manually doing uh, tweaks to heuristics or to squad composition, things like that, he, I would have lost this fight, hands down. Uh, why don't I send more attackers to defend? Well, because of travel time. Um, at about 800 ticks of travel time, and then the, the spawning time, the boosting time, it gets a little expensive to send those counter squads in. So i got to figure out a solution to um, sort of um, inter basically have my observers look for incoming squads and then respond earlier um, and only when necessary. So a bunch of tweaks I can make to those defending squads. Um, yeah, I, I had to do some manual interaction here to sort of uh, create an emergency, move everything from terminal to storage, and I was doing that in between his um, power creep waves. <laughs> Interesting, yeah, definitely look at the API um, if you're new. Tons of great insights there. Um, anyway, those are the main comments. And... Um, this high level warfare is really interesting. Um, your strategy sort of change and it becomes like a more of a game of economics than a game of um, you know who can who can get boosted creeps in there, who can make a, a decent squad. It becomes uh, who can keep their supply chains going for long enough to actually be able to you know, can't fully counter these uh, attacks. And uh, one thing about Tega is he spends almost all of his uh, resources and credits on boosts and boost supplies plus his own personal mining so uh, he has very deep pockets and he can keep up this fight for weeks um, so it'll be interesting to see if I, I can make changes to be able to hold off and sort of prevent him from doing future attacks or if uh, I will eventually lose that room and we'll see anyway thanks for watching and um, hope you enjoyed if you have comments or questions leave them down below uh, or reach out in game uh, love to talk and uh, so if you have uh, things you'd like to ask me about, let me know.